Hey, how's it going? My name is Moldover and I'm a controllerist. Controllerism is just like turntablism, but instead of using turntables and a mixer to make music, I use software and a controller. controllerism and everything I've learned along the way. We're going to talk about the hardware, the software, uh, the way I organize and prepare my sounds, the effects I use, the, uh, the mixing techniques, and how I bring all that together to perform. Here's what my controller used to look like. And here's what it looks like after a few modifications. I replaced some of the original controls with these more tactile rubber coated knobs and these big chunky faders. I made brackets to mount these touch controls so that they're right in front of me next to everything else. I mounted the electronics for those touch controls right inside this box so there's less stuff to carry around. I moved the keys around on this keyboard to reflect what's going on in my custom software setup. I wanted to be able to tap out really fast rhythms on individual keys so I glued pieces of plastic to these black keys to make them bigger. And last but not least, I took this knob that could potentially mess everything up if I bump it, and I blocked it off with a little plastic cap. It looks like there's a lot going on here, but the important controls are really simple. I limit myself to five channels that each just have a volume fader, a synchronized start button, a re-trigger, a volume gate, one knob for effects, with just a small collection of sounds and only these controls there are massive musical possibilities. I use my computer's lowest screen resolution so that all the words and graphics are really big and easy to see. I maximize my screen real estate by getting rid of everything in the display that I don't use during a performance. To add useful things that I will use, I have a custom plugin that shows me a metronome, big volume meters, and visual feedback on important controls. Here's a concept that makes my instrument more expressive but keeps the interface simple. I call it smart knobs. I take a simple control like a knob and program it to control many different things at the same time together. For example, here's a smart knob that controls the parameters of a delay effect. 
When the knob is turned all the way to the left, it switches the effect off. Moving from left to right, we start with an echo that morphs into a resonator and then becomes a flanger. All these different effects are built with just one delay, so I can smoothly sweep between them. The effects also synchronize to rhythmic note values, so I can leave the knob in almost any position and get nice musical results. Several of my master effects are based on a plugin designed by Chris List called Beat Lookup. Beat Lookup continuously records the sounds I'm playing and lets me manipulate that recording in musical ways using note values and tempo ratios. I've modified Beat Lookup to work specifically with my controller so I can do pitch shifting, time stretching, stutter editing, beat juggling, and scratching. On top of all that, I had some simple filters master smart knobs. With all this together, there are an endless number of things I can do with any sound I play. Ultimately, there's only one thing that separates a serious controllerist from someone who's just messing around. After years of developing my technique, hot rodding my controller, and customizing software, I finally created the holy grail of controllerism, the Freebird button. With one simple gesture, I can instantly answer that secret yearning that lies deep within each of us and cries out. Freebird! Freebird! Generally speaking, there are 12 musical keys. In this circle, keys that are closer together have more tones in common and will blend better. I spent some time going through all my sounds and figuring out what the most common keys are. When I bring a new sound into my library, I grab a keyboard, play along, and figure out what key it's in. If it's in a less common key, I pitch shift it up or down into a neighboring key. Now all my songs are only in a few different keys, and those keys have lots of tones in common. This makes it more likely that any two sounds I blend will create a nice harmonic mix. To make it easier to actually see key relationships, I use the color wheel. Keys that blend better harmonically blend better visually. Moving around the color wheel helps me change keys smoothly. I use darker shades of each color to indicate minor keys. Connecting with the audience that's listening to my music is very important. Having an instrument with simple, dedicated controls means that there's a direct connection between all my movements and all the sound that I create. The audience can see exactly what they're hearing. I turn my laptop sideways like this to remove a big barrier between me and the audience. Moving with the music and exaggerating my gestures helps an audience understand that I'm making music. It helps pull them in and it gets them moving too.